so far we have learned so many things in this ongoing tutorial of uh, Tailwind CSS tutorial for beginners. Now in this tutorial, all we are going to do, we will be learning some kind of CSS3 animation properties in Tailwind CSS as defined in Tailwind CSS. And we will see some of the results in practical demonstration. There it goes, you can see clearly that this is the translate property. This is the rotate and this is the skewing property has been used in Tailwind CSS. So we will be knowing all about these classes. Stay tuned. And in this context, I'd like to say that here we will be building up another separate containing element or div, which will be holding all those boxes. Those we will be creating right up over here. So in the first case, we need to build up those boxes. In this case, I have created this particular comment field in an order, in an effort to distinguish between all those elements, those we have created so far. So in this block of this code, all we are going to do, we will be building up the basic box, the holding parent element box and the corresponding child elements inside it. So let's proceed. First of all, let's build up this parent box here. So we are putting it as and inside it, we will be creating three consecutive boxes. Those will be aligned side by side. So here goes the first one. Now definitely this will be the box one. In the similar manner, we will be producing three more boxes here. Like this one will be green for say, and it will be 400. Make this one as yellow for say, and it will be 400. So we have made all those things right over here. And another thing, let's put it on such that it comes in the central part of this particular text editor. Now, all we have done here, in the first case, we have created this parent element. And in the next case, we have created all those child elements or those child boxes. Now here, if we get back to our project and below, we can see that this will be the result because we haven't mentioned any kind of inline properties to our boxes. So by default, all of them are practically getting down on top of each other. They are practically vertically aligned. And these boxes, all those three boxes of box one, I'm sorry, this is not, this should be changed right over here. This is the box one. So this will be box two and this will be box three in the next case. So all of them should be aligned side by side in a horizontal manner. In an effort to that, first of all, let's get back to our project and here we are putting this particular class of inline block. So we have put all of them side by side. The intention is practically to put, to place all those boxes side by side. And this is the class which is known as inline block. So if we now get back to our project and reload, we can see that all of those boxes, those are practically aligned side by side. We may add some kind of width property to it. For say, we are using this class of width 48. Uh, this is the class, this one. We may use it over here and here. There it goes. And here is the result. All of them are now having a particular um, width of 48. That means if we now get back to this F12 and if we select any one of those boxes, we can see that the width 48, it means that the width will be 12 RDM. And this is the width which is right now being imposed in each and every boxes, those we can see right over here. And if we want to align all those boxes into the central position, 
then all we need to do into this parent box we need to use this particular class of text center control s reload and you can see that this will be the result all the contents inside this particular parent box it is practically aligned into the central position of this individual holding or parent box now the next thing is first of all let's concentrate on some transform properties as been seen in tailwind css so if we get back to our project and if we type here tailwind css transform so this is the result we can see that this is the transform origin practically let's get down here and this is the transform properties those we have been talking right over here and there goes the scale rotate translate skew transform origin so if we now first of all click on this scale we can see that these are the classes those been used right over here and all those classes those are practically carrying with a definite property something like this one this is scale zero which is using a transform scale x of 0 and the same thing goes for transform scale y it is 0 but in case of scale 50 there goes the property the transform scale x along this x axis it will be having a 0.5 deviation and along this y axis it will be magnified to 0.5 x of the original size or dimension of the element so if we now get back to our text editor here and in the first case if we now use this individual property of transform for say we are using here this one this scale 50 class so if we now use scale 50 there it goes this is the transform scale 50 class for this box one so if you now get back to our project and reload we can see that this will be the result this is the box one which is currently having a transform imposed on this particular element with a scaling property of 0.5 both along the x-axis and the y-axis the same thing goes for the other elements if we impose here transform scale 75 and in the next case if we copy it from here and paste it here and if we put it to 90 we will see that there goes the result this is the box one this is the box two and this is the box three 